What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around at the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Nanto Omar Bourbon Cask. Stick around. So we've got another Nanto expression with us today. I recently looked at the entry level sherried one, which I absolutely loved. So today we're gonna to be looking at its sister expression, which is of course bourbon matured. Uh, really like that sherry. Definitely was looking forward to coming around to the bourbon here. It is worth noting that I have had both expressions before, but prior to picking these bottles up recently, it had been about eight years since my last bottle. And I remember when I first tried these expressions back then, I ended up preferring the bourbon one, which kind of surprised me. Usually I gravitate towards sherry matured whiskeys, but I remember finding the bourbon to be a lot more full, a lot more balanced, just a lot more interesting. If you watched that recent review of the sherried one, I'll link it up there. If you haven't seen it, you know that I absolutely loved it. I scored it something like 89. Uh, it was affordable, it was rich, it was balanced. Just a massive step up from what it used to be. So obviously that was a very welcome change. And off the heels of that one, I was really curious to come back around to this one. Now I'm not sure how interesting a review of this bottle is going to be for my international audience. Uh, this is sold in several international markets, but availability might be pretty spotty. Anyway, I was also encouraged by a bunch of my local Taiwanese audience to come back around to this one. Some of them said that the bourbon release is still going to be the better option, while others preferred the sherry. So obviously it was one I had to try for myself just to see how I felt, but I'd be surprised if this ends up being better than that sherried one. That sherried one was pretty epic. Regardless, I'm not going to be turning this into a versus video where it's like bourbon versus sherry, but obviously I am going to compare the two and I'm going to tell you about my preference. Um, it's worth noting that most of these Nanto releases are going to be no age stated, and that's because Taiwan is a subtropical climate. So whiskey is going to age a lot faster here, so I don't have a problem with Taiwanese no age stated whiskeys. Of course, I do prefer age statements on bottles out of Scotland, uh, but that's a much colder climate. So age statements, I don't think that's a standard that can or should be imposed on whiskeys from warmer climates. Anyway, I do like Nanto. I think they're a fantastic brand. They're often overshadowed by Cavalan, but they make wonderful whiskeys themselves. Not only that, as many of you know, I do live in Taiwan, so it's always nice to support a local brand wherever you happen to be. So with that out of the way, why don't we hop into a review of this stuff, see what it's all about. And in the meantime, if you can kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. We do have some great specs here, which is the norm from this brand. Our ABV comes in at 46%. This is going to be non-chill filtered and our color is natural. So all good. We do have a nice natural color to our whiskey here. As I mentioned in my last review of the sherried one, I don't care for this presentation. I find it very uninspired. It looks kind of rudimentary. I do hope that down the line, their marketing department decides to give us something a little bit more visually pleasing. For now, same score as the last bottle, 0.5 out of five for presentation. As with the sherried expression, it does tell us that it's non-chill filtered, but it doesn't mention anything about color, although we do know that it is naturally colored. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's not much to say about this one that I didn't say for the sherried one. I don't think this stands out. It's not modern. It's not stylish. It doesn't look premium. This is a great brand, but they're making some pretty questionable marketing choices. Now, I don't know if that's a cultural thing or not, but I'm not a fan of this look. Let's try our nose. Tropical and thick. Loads of fruity sweetness here. Honey, banana, barbecued banana, green apple, papaya milk, cream, loads of vanilla, white chocolate, there's some pears, sultanas, and some light florals. Now the palate. Mm. Even thicker than the nose suggested, I'm getting more honey, more uh, banana in here, icing sugar coconut, grilled pineapple, some vanilla, butterscotch, and some char. Uh, again, very thick, fruity, dense. I'm getting sort of like seared or grilled tropical fruits. And the finish. Mm. Okay, more of that grilled pineapple, um, vanilla pound cake, vanilla pods, honey, ginger, florals, mustard seeds, and some roasted nuts. This is medium in length, but very nice. 
So the flavors in here are pretty much a straight line. Uh, this is not a roller coaster ride of a whiskey with the nose, the palate, and the finish being a very linear delivery of flavor. But as it so happens, I do like the flavors in this. I think the flavors are beautiful here. So I'm okay with that consistency. This is a somewhat conventional whiskey. It's not a masterpiece, but it is very well made. Uh, but I'll tell you guys right out the gate, I prefer the sherry. Of course, the sherry profile is more aligned with my sensibilities. I'm a sherry guy, but I also found more complexity and some more interesting notes in that one. But if you're the type who prefers a more delicate Highland profile, I think this one's definitely going to suit you. I also think it's a pretty technically perfect whiskey. If I didn't know that this was a Taiwanese whiskey, I'd probably describe it as a particularly dense tropical Highland scotch. Not an off note to be found in this, I think it's a great ambassador for bourbon matured whiskey. Um, it's not a standout character in any way, it's a very traditional profile, but it's very well executed. Again, I like those tropical notes and I like the density here. And I particularly like the vanilla and seared pineapple notes that we get in this, so it is good stuff and I can't really imagine anyone outright disliking this. However, I think a lesser whiskey with a similar profile would run the risk of coming off a little bit maybe generic or forgettable. Luckily, that's not the case with this stuff. As I mentioned, we've got that density. It gives the whiskey a little bit more presence. Uh, we also have some fun kind of nooks and crannies that we can explore in the flavors. Uh, admittedly, they are pretty subtle, but they're just an extra hook. You know, it's something we can lock onto and say, okay, this is a traditional bourbon matured profile, but it's not generic. It's got stuff going on. It doesn't just kind of blend in with the rest of them out there. So yeah, it's good stuff. But again, I wouldn't call it outstanding. My score for this one is going to be 86, which may not seem that high, but keep in mind, this is a style of whiskey that I don't really gravitate to, and a lesser whiskey with some more generic flavors would have scored several points, especially when it comes to value, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, I like this a lot for what it is, but as I mentioned earlier, I think it's got nothing on the sherry. I think the sherry is a much better whiskey. Um, this, I'd say, is about as good as I remember it being when I first had it eight years ago. It was good then and it's good now. Of course, this is eight years ago, so I don't remember it that clearly, but I probably would have scored it pretty similarly at the time, which is a sharp contrast to the sherry one, which today or recently I scored 89 back then, probably would have been an 83 or an 84. Um, but yeah, still wonderful stuff. Again, great if you're a fan of bright Highland profiles. This stuff also shows that Taiwan can recreate a Scottish style of whiskey and execute it as well, if not better in some cases than a lot of Scottish stuff out there. So again, if you're a fan of like, Highlandy characters like maybe Glen Morangy or Old Pulteney or Glen Cadam, you're probably going to like this stuff. Much like the sherry, the value here is excellent. I could almost bump this up to an 87 based on value alone. However, I do live in Taiwan. It's the domestic market for this stuff. If you're buying it internationally, you are going to be paying more than me. So 86 it is. Now I have checked some of the international prices for this stuff. I've checked some of the UK prices and the European markets as well. And they are higher, but they're still pretty reasonable. So if this is a profile that sounds interesting to you, I'd say grab it. All right, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, hit subscribe down below, click that little bell icon, and of course, smash the like. Now I do want to hear from you. Have you ever tried anything from this brand? Have you heard of this brand? How much would it cost you for a bottle of this stuff? And finally, down in the comments, let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.